I don't want to say twice or for the hundredth time what you've or how much you've taken from us. I think you know that. But I just, I hope you go to God with all what, all the guilt, all the things, the bad things you may have done in the past. Each and every one of us may have done something that we're not supposed to do. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not gonna say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see I I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not gonna say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please. Yes. Yo, what's good with y'all? It's K3 Godson. I know I started that a little bit different. There was a police officer named Amber Geiger. If y'all haven't heard, this is about uh, two years old um, or almost two years old. Uh, Amber Geiger, she uh, she claims to have accidentally uh, killed a man as she, she walked into the wrong apartment, believed that uh, someone was in her apartment. She was and she was an officer off duty right now. And uh, she and she believed that somebody was in her uh, apartment. She then began to pull out her weapon and kill the man, um, which is his name was Botham Gene. This is the the brother of uh, the guy right here who's speaking. The, the thing I just wanted to talk about today was the forgiveness. It's a supernatural happenstance that somebody is able to forgive somebody on, on such an extent like that. By only the power and the grace of God can a, is a man even able to forgive. I want to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21. Then Peter came up and said to, to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Matthew six fourteen, Jesus says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. How you forgive people here on this earth, likewise our Heavenly Father will do for us. And the thing is, that's not just strictly just the just the rule. It's like it, it's not supposed to and it's not intended to be some burdensome rule for us to go through that we're forced to forgive everybody and we're just left with the pain. But just like Jesus says, by his stripes, we are healed. We are set free. He sets the captives free. And he gives us his authority. And by one of the things that will set us free is forgiveness. You may have heard the analogy uh, be used many times before um, about not forgiving somebody is like drinking poison and wanting them to die. By forgiving, you're not excusing someone of their trespasses. But what you're doing is saying that their trespasses no longer has a hold on your life enough to burden it. The Lord says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We are to forgive others, not just so they can get off the hook. Because in the end, if I forgive a man who sins against me, the, the Lord is still just because we serve a just Lord. We serve a just God. And, and we say, how, how can we forgive someone who murdered our brother? How can how can we how can I forgive someone who murdered my daughter? How can I forgive someone who put my my child through such a bad relationship? How can I forgive someone who is wrong with me to such an extent? They didn't just steal from me. They didn't just break something, a possession of mine. But they took a piece of me. God gives us the authority to take that peace back. And that's by not holding on to them. By not holding on to the person. And if you think about it like this, imagine what we do to God. Some of the sins we commit this day, if we had to pay the price for our own sin like they did uh, in, in the earlier times, Leviticus, Exodus, Numbers, then we would all truly experience the, the true payment of our debt. Through death, stoning, through having to make blood sacrifices. And that's not, that doesn't sound fun at all. But we dishonor the Lord every day. Such a treacherous level. Such wretched and wicked, deceitful hearts that we had before we met God. So we have to come to God because we've done him worse than Amber Geiger did Botham Jean and his family. Truly. If you don't know Jesus, well, then there was a man who 2000 years ago paid the fair price for all sin. We no longer have to make up for the sin that was committed by making sacrifices, by put by losing our life, by losing an eye, by losing a limb, because Jesus Christ paid the fair price because we were all sinners in our trespasses. The wages of our sin was death. It was only fair that we be put to death. But Jesus Christ, the only perfect man to walk this earth, man and God at the same time, walked this earth 2000 years ago and laid his life down for all of eternity that we may live life and live life more abundantly that it is a free gift that we have to heaven and all you have to do is lay your life down don't accept Jesus into your heart give him your heart and let him instill within you his don't give Jesus a piece of your life. Lay down your whole life. Because he loves you. And I love you. God bless y'all.